excruciating. They are horrendous to try and get rid of. Simple, painful. It's so time consuming. Horrible. Horrendous. Yeah, they're like evil. Pain. Painful. An ordeal. It's cruciating pain. So very, very painful. One word, hell. 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 Uh, wondering what it was, um, pain, wondering if this was part of the illness and if I was going to keep, if I was going to keep going through this on a regular basis or whether it would just, there were just one-offs and it would go away. Once I realised what it was and how bad it was going to be, I got in touch with a special nurse. I think I just thought I'd got a, a, a sore point on my knuckle and I didn't really understand and then I put two and two together because I knew that it was a potential complication of having spiridema. Ouch, what is this? Very painful. What do I do about it? How it was affecting me because of being a builder at work. And I got home one day and I said to my wife, I said, I can't do this anymore. Mm. I really cannot do this anymore. I am finding it just immeasurably just I, I'm intolerable right now. Mm. And I just, just couldn't, couldn't do it anymore. Yeah. And I felt bad because I've worked all my life. Yes. Right? Mm. You know, even, even when I was at school, I used yeah. to do weekend jobs. Yeah. Right? You know, never gave anything a thought, you know, because you're young. Mm. You just, and, I, and I've worked six days, seven days a week all my life. And then to be, Almost like a broken man yeah. driving home from work one night, you know, and then mm. having to come out and say t to a wife, mm. I can't do this anymore. Yeah, and, and yeah, I, f I, felt, I felt broken at the time. Mm. I, I felt absolutely broken. I didn't know how to tackle it. I didn't know what to put on it. I didn't know to dress it or when it actually did break through the skin. I didn't know how to pain manage it. I wasn't sure what it was. When it was dry, it was hard. When it was wet, it was all, well, for want of a better word, snotty. Yeah, I just left it on this shield and then it would disappear on its own. I was really shocked because I got um, both hands with three fingers each. In both hands I had severe, I said I couldn't do anything, very painful. It started off as a cut on my ring finger on my right hand yeah. and it didn't heal. I cut it in the May and by October it had turned septic and it hadn't healed. I was admitted into hospital and that's when they told me it was an ulcer. The most ex painful experience of my life. Yeah, it was just so sore, but I didn't really know what to do. So I kind of just wrapped them up with a plaster. I came into the world free and to an ulcer clinic. To be properly diagnosed was five years. It took almost five years. Uh, I was very surprised. I've never experienced something like that, obviously. I didn't know what to do. My hands, uh, my finger were very painful. I mean, that was one of the signs of sclerodermia. I was surprised uh, how actually sore they were and how it impeded things you did. Um, just generally things like getting dressed, doing up buttons, zips, you know, anything at all to wash up, to cook, anything really it impedes on day-to-day -day activities. The first thing that I done, I realised oh, after I made a mistake, was put plaster on them. But that just drew them obviously and made them sort of wet and happy. I was shocked, the pain I was experiencing. Uh, because I had a, a leaflet um, from Royal Free, I called, I think uh, one of the numbers, I explained the sort of pain and the wound and that was when I got to know it was called digital also. I didn't understand what it was mm. and the pain of it was her absolutely horrendous. Yeah. You know, like walking around the garden in the night wanting to get a knife and just chop my finger off. Asked for help from the doctors and the local hospital and you know, nobody knew anything about it or it helped me and I just felt really lost with it. I was puzzled at first, like, obviously I didn't know what they were. I had the pain and the swelling. They never ever really healed. Uh, they sort of came to the surface and scabbed over yeah. and then I would have a flare up and that scab would come off because I said I'm a picker. 
and again it would open up. Um, so I would say years, all my knuckles have ulcers. Wow, this is painful. What's this? Because they are really painful. And I was on the ward at the time yeah. and I spoke to one of the rheumatology doctors yeah. and their first line then of treatment was to put you on an antibiotic. To tell the truth, I did know what, what they were initially, um, except they caused great pain. And then um, once I was in touch with um, the hospital here, then they gave me like a, a, a diagnosis of what it was. So then I was a bit, a, a lot clearer um, of what it was. I went to the doctors, I spoke to the doctor and they gave me to the nurse, referred me to the nurse and um, they started treating me with antibiotics and I've had hundreds of antibiotics um, since. Um, she did dress them uh, but she wasn't sure what to dress them with because they hadn't experienced these kind of ulcers on the fingers before. I think people are doing their best um, to help. The nurse at my surgery has certainly been very good. She's been in touch with, uh, with uh, tissue viability. I had an ulcer on my toe, which she then referred me to the dietary for a podiatry dealing with the ulcer on my toe. And certainly here with the nurse here, that she certainly healed two of the really bad ulcers that I had. That first time I went to the GP, I had a good experience, partly because the GP was more knowledgeable than I expected him to be. And then in November, Pucidic acid wasn't working, I phoned 411. I suppose thinking, if it's that, if it's badly infected, at what point is it turn to septic? I don't know. No, I went to the doctors about it and they just kind of fobbed me off. And it was only when the pain got excruciating and I ended up having a red line start going up my arm that I went to A&E. They took one look at it and sent me here. So I've been seeing one of the research nurses at the Royal Free. She's been brilliant and she's shown me how to dress them for different stages. So it's been quite a good learning exercise for me. I showed the pharmacist mm -hmm. and she suggested it's a tiny little pot of paste that was quite solid and you had to stir it to like liquidize it a little bit. And she advised me to put that on and um, put a dry dressing on it, but that just seemed to make it worse, made it very weepy and pappy. Mm -hmm. um, it really didn't work at all. I haven't, say, really had a lot of care. I don't know what I've sorted out myself. You know, I wasn't aware that you could get care for digital ulcers. I think I was treated well then. I don't have anything bad about But the period between when I didn't know what was happening until I got to know what's really hard about when I got to know that this is what it takes. The vascular surgeon said, oh, you're just going to lose your fingers and there's nothing we can do about it because it's the fine blood vessels, there's nothing we can do. From here, yeah. absolutely brilliant. Oh. If I had to seek help somewhere else, yes. it's really, really hard. You get a lot of the time, oh, you need to cut it the right free. You need to put it right away. That's all I ever seem to get, which makes me a bit upset, really. Because it's, you know, I feel like you should be able to go, if you need it to, to your local sort of places to be able to get it. Instead of having, I feel like I'm always putting on a referee. So then I just don't ask for help. Uh, when I came to the UK in 2011, um, I was shown some sort of um, uh, iodine patches, that's uh, gauzes to put on and how to bandage them, but um, by the ulcer clinic, he had no knowledge of to, at all. He just referred me back to the wrong free and just said, let's take their advice and I'll have to describe whatever they think is the best thing. Because I've been to various doctors over my way and they just, just give me creams and stuff, but straight away here they knew instantly. Um, what the problems were. And then I had arthros for probably once every three months for years uh, until I felt that arthros wasn't working anymore. And then they referred me here to the Royal Free to um, start the centre. Arthros has saved me a lot. The difference is I don't have the digital ulcers.
being managed with all these medications now yeah. and being outside less, that it's definitely helping stabilising the Raynards, the, the digital ulcers. So I wasn't prescribed dressings, but when I was at the doctors, they, they would dress it in the Nipor dressings, just like the ones that are on it now. Oh, so, and, then, and then since then, I've been buying those or the Boots or Tesco equivalent. When I was discharged, I had to come back twice a week to have the dressing changed. Yeah. I didn't get on with Sildenafil. No, no Losartan. Okay. That has started to lower my blood pressure too much, okay. even in bed. They dressed it for me. I wasn't really that sure what to do for the next few weeks. The tablets that I take at home, by Centrum, that has made a massive difference. I am a big fan of the debridement. I think it totally makes sense. I guess the problem is it's very time consuming. I mean, the ulcers are, are slow healing. The treatment is okay. It's only now after years of, I think, Ilopros and a combination of Bosantin that I'm actually getting fewer ulcers. People don't realise how it affects your mental state. I feel very conscious of it. You know, if, if it isn't dressed, like when it first starts, so that, you know, people see it and just sort of think, oh, you know, what's all that, like mould on her finger or whatever it may be. It affects my mood. Sometimes I get quite depressed with it because I can't do the things that I used to be able to do. And I'm still considering having two of the fingers removed where I keep getting ulcers. The two massive difficulties you face with a dish bath in the context of spirodana is you probably have spirodactyly as well. So actually getting a dressing anywhere near, let alone on the ulcer and likely to stay there, is uphill. Well, for me personally, that is the signs I used to get about two or three weeks maybe a month before they actually turned into an open wound. I used to have terrible night's sleep. Just awful, just awful, just an awful experience with digital ulcers. The worst thing with the ulcers I found was night time. I would be clock watching all night because as soon as you lay down with these ulcers, it feels like your whole body begins to throb. Because it's your fingers and you need your fingers to do any of those things and when it's on the right hand in the, and the right handed, it's just everything is so difficult. We are not be able to do the social activities what you used to do. It is a big hindrance in your life. I mean when you're in pain, yeah. then you are sad and you feel down and felt very isolated even though I was within a family. Finally, having an understanding of how they progress and how they like identify them so that I can jump on them before they become like a real problem. Um, that is something that has really, really helped me. There, if there was something available that you could cover up those fingers with cracks or the potential for ulcers, if there was something out there that you could use to keep your hands covered? I think there at least my first is enabling patients and particularly you know, sort of whoever they may be living with if they are, to look after the dressings and understand what they're doing. And if I have to do antibiotics, at least some sort of um, communication with my GP to say, you know, has scleroderma, so she'll need a longer course, and mm. not so I have to go haggle with my GP about it. So I think there's a lot of knowledge that you have, you medical profession, have, that is so ingrained in you that you don't realise that it's a mystery to everybody, you know, we just don't have it. It Possibly that sort of information was, in, was contained within the initial module leaflets and things that came through when, when I was very first referred. I was so scared, I didn't read it for a few months. So it's almost like on an early appointment with the with a consultant where they're actually speaking to you specifically and they say, if they were to say, well, that's an area that could be a potential concern in the future, it's not yet, but if it, if it, if you get broken skin, here's the leaflet mm -hmm. that will tell you what to do next. Mm -hmm. I think maybe the the process of the consultation was maybe a bit more, um, not 
routine, that's not the word I mean, formulaic. So following a script rather than really personalised. I find it between the service here, the GP surgery, and I am with my local rheumatologist. So it's not that he's not concerned, but it didn't even occur to me to contact the local hospital. But my feeling is people have to be aware about this visitor culture. They have to be told and explained to whoever the probability to get this one to be informed in time and also they should approach the correct professional at the right time. Talking to people that have digital ulcers, how they cope with the pain and there should be something for the GP. If you go to your GP, they have no clue, absolutely no clue. And you tell them how much pain you're in and they'll prescribe you paracetamol or codeine and they don't work. There doesn't seem to be a lot of support that way. I would say emotional support. I would say it just needs to be available to more people throughout the country. Yeah, speaking with, with fellow patients, you know, with social media, this is something that could work really well to share experiences. Empowering the person to like know that it's what they're doing is right. Yes. Because I think that's the thing that I've doubted along the way. It would have been helpful if had there been a video or an online sort of remote appointments available for patients to come attend those visits. I think a lot more information um, about ulcers, a lot more signposts to where we can get additional information or uh, additional treatment, more uh, natural ways of treating them, a community place where we can all advise one another, uh, rather than going onto Facebook where there is an actual medical person involved in that as well, who's watching the advice others are giving as well. Because we can go online and see lots of pictures and then obviously we're always seeing the most horrendous sides of things. And that's, that's what we see. Or do I need to contact the hospital? Do, can I continue with what I'm doing? It's that sort of knowledge on, you know, am I going to lose my finger? I think it would be nice if um, we could grow a community where lots and lots of patients get together and we see different photographs of however horrendous they are or how mild the ulcers are. So you can sort of gauge where you could possibly be